Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the session. Uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer, then we'll get into our teaching. Uh, would any one of you like to please lead in prayer? Sally, uh, would you mind leading us in prayer? Or Rosalind, anyone can lead us in prayer, please. Uh, let's pray. Father, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus as we begin our class for today. I pray that you will help us, Holy Spirit. You bless our pastors as it um, uh, teaches us this morning also. And bless each one of us, Lord. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Right. Thank you so much, Zeddy. All right. So uh, just a quick review of what we did last week. Last week, we... Looked at chapter, it was chapter seven and chapter eight. Chapter seven, uh, we looked at the cell as your ministry team. Uh, you build, you follow up with newcomers, you strategically build the cell group. Uh, you have seed projects that you can do, outreaches involved in Sunday services. Then we also, very importantly, chapter eight, we looked at uh, pitfalls to avoid, right? Now, uh, we looked at quite a few of them, right? Uh, how you and I, as leaders, can avoid, uh, you know, things that can cause a cell group to, you know, be unfruitful or to even just break, right? And we talked about some of them: avoid shortcuts, avoid competition, uh, uh, watch out for people with personal agendas, right? Remember, we talked about that. Then people will come from independent ministries. Be careful. Uh, you know, uh, you, you are the shepherd of those 12 people or 15 people, whoever you're uh, looking after, right? So you, you are the one who must be willing to protect them and cover them. Uh, then you look after independent ministries, uh, that meaning you be careful. Don't, don't just invite whoever you feel like. Uh, personal prophecies uh, uh, and then don't force newcomers to come. Uh, don't relinquish your leadership. And so you may have people who are, uh, you know, much more mature than what we are, uh, but don't just relinquish your leadership. Don't hand, it over, hand over the teaching of the word to just because somebody knows more, right? Uh, so you, you and I must understand that God has called us and we are journeying to a certain level of maturity and uh, in time we will get there. So. Uh, so don't worry about that. Uh, don't allow the cell group uh, to become a hindrance in your family, right? Uh, and it's very important because in the name of ministry, we can go about doing a lot of things and then miss out on the family aspect. And that's not what God wants, right? We God, God expects us to maintain a good balance between ministry and family. Okay, let's get into chapter nine. Now, chapter nine, uh, we're going to look at the administrative side of things, that is cell administration. And let me just uh, present the notes. And, right, cell administration. Now, the word administration simply means to, you know, to oversee and to look after, right? Uh, and so, so sorry. Nine. Yeah. So, you know, initially when when you have when you start a church, when you start life groups, you may have maybe three or four life groups, and uh, normally the senior pastor just handles it, or he finds a few volunteers who can uh, oversee the life groups. But uh, over time, as your as your church grows and as you have many more life groups, um, it is very important to look after the administration. Meaning, one thing, first thing we may have to do is to appoint a cell group pastor or a life group pastor. Now, what will be his or her role? The the cell group, the life group pastor number one will have to oversee the cell groups that are there the life groups and make sure that the life groups are functioning well 
make sure that people are getting connected to the life groups, uh, ensure that you know life groups are uh, being effective, uh, they're following protocol, uh, you know, things are going smooth, the leaders are uh, you know uh, able to minister to the people who are attending the life group. So if you see here, you have a certain structure. So firstly is uh, you must have a cell pastor. And, uh, and with the cell pastor, over time, uh, I would say probably when, when you are you know, 20 life groups, eventually, as a church, you can plan on appointing associate cell pastors. Now, we, we've just named it cell pastors here, so you can also, uh, you know, you can also call it uh, life group pastor or associate life group pastor. So, so cell pastor, then over time, you have associate cell pastors. And let me explain what we are doing here at APC. And, uh, it's a very similar structure, right? We have a life group pastor, uh, a coordinator. And then what we are going to do is we are going to have zonal leaders right zonal leaders and these zonal leaders will have under them will also have area coordinators now don't get confused right so this is when we are thinking long term so right now we have about 41 life groups uh, and so i believe that you know 2024 if we start another 10 life groups, we will have 50 life groups. So what we want to see, what we envision is that we have, uh, we're not going to go into uh, having a life group, associate life group pastor, but what we thought was we will have zonal leaders. Right? So probably we have uh, five zones in our city. So North, South, East, West, and Central. Right, central. Uh, so we divided the zone into five, and eventually, what we thought was we will hand over probably five life groups to five zonal leaders, and so it would be their responsibility to oversee these five life group leaders. Now, over time, if you know we eventually will reach about a hundred to 120, 130 life groups. Under the zonal leaders, we will also have area coordinators, right? Uh, and then uh, probably what I'll do next class is I'll probably make a, you know, just a presentation and show you what what is, how, how do we plan to do this? And uh, right now we are on cell pastor, that's life group pastor and zonal leaders. And then what we'll also have is area coordinators. And each area coordinator can probably look at five or six life groups. So why are we doing this? Right. So, so as a life group coordinator, I will not be able to oversee all 40 or even as we grow, maybe 50 to 100 life groups. So we get people involved. Right. And eventually over time, we will also plan to have an associate uh, like group pastor, but we thought we can use our church folks, right? And many of them have been life group leaders for years, so we train them. Uh, and and let's look at you know some of the responsibilities that uh, these cell pastors and associate cell pastors have, right? So we know that. Uh, so again, this is at APC, twelve cell, uh, twelve in each group. Okay, so what will he or she, that is the associate cell pastor, or in our case, the zonal leaders, what would they have to do? Look at this. First one, your cell pastor will be in touch, associate cell pastor or your cell pastor will be in touch with you on a weekly basis. So every week, he will probably just call and say, hey, you know, you had life group last week. How did life group go? Uh, were there any queries? Were there any questions? Now think about this. Can a, you know can one person call like fifty life group leaders and talk to all of them? Right? 
uh, it's not going to be easy, right? Especially when you have other tasks as well. And so that is why getting administration, getting people to get involved, especially when the ministry grows, administration is very, very important, right? It ensures that you're in touch with everyone. There is constant fellowship. It's not like, okay, they meet once in two weeks, so uh, we'll call them once in two weeks. No, it doesn't work that way, right? Uh, now, if we want to see the cell group be effective, we, we must be willing to speak into their lives, minister to the leaders, and only then the leaders will be able to minister to their life group members, right? So that's why um, uh, 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 associate cell group, cell pastor, or a zonal leader is very important, right? Now, this zonal leader, the cell associate cell pastor, will keep, will closely work with the uh, main cell pastor. So he will probably send reports, right? Uh, OK, this is what is happening. We have these life groups. There are certain life groups uh, that, you know, sometimes people travel, they go, they, they move out of country, or they want to take a break. Uh, and so everything, all the information comes to the cell pastor. Now, the cell pastor makes decisions, uh, gives advice as to what can be done. Right. Um, again, as as an associate cell pastor, you can request your cell pastors for lessons, resources. Uh, but in case of uh, APC, what we do is, as you know, we follow the Sunday sermon. Uh, but you're always free to, you know, discuss uh, whatever is on your mind. But again, this is, you must ensure that it is being always it's being overseen. Right. So. Uh, so the, the, whatever we are sharing and teaching, remember, it's going to affect the church. It's going to affect church people. People will are going to, uh, you know, listen to you, and they're going to, as leaders, they're going to receive from you. So we got to make sure that what we teach is right and in line with the word of God, right? And then, um, you know, as a cell pastor or zonal leader, or so, right, you can visit your cell groups periodically. If you need additional help, like counseling, visiting, praise and worship, you can always contact your cell pastor. So, for example, you know there was this there, there, there was this life couple of life groups actually. Uh, they don't have somebody who can play an instrument. So I remember they got back to me and said, you know what, uh, cell, the, the life group is really good, uh, but what we miss is worship times. Right? Uh, we don't feel good by just playing a couple of songs on the laptop. Uh, is there a way that somebody from the worship team can come and you know just lead us in worship for two uh, you know two or three songs either on a guitar or a keyboard? Now that was a request that came in, and uh, so then what what I did was I checked with our worship pastor. So is there anybody living in this side of town? So uh, is it North Bangalore, South East, West? Which area? Okay, whichever area we tried to find somebody, and we requested them if you can just go and lead worship and so we were able to get people to you know just go and uh, you know people were available but uh, i'm not saying every time people are, are going to be available but there'll be times you know people are working but since most life groups meet on saturday we were able to send people they went they lead the worship and they still go to a few life groups and lead worship right so uh your cell pastor or your associate cell pastor is somebody who must be able to, you know, I won't say pull strings, but uh, be able to coordinate and be able to, you know, make sure that the health of the life group is good, right? Uh, again, going to health, we have cell leaders feedback form, right? Uh, so, for example, what we have is we have. Um, uh, LG report at abcwo.org. So, uh, so what happens is if people would like to write in about their leaders, if they want to be anonymous, they just write up and they say, okay, this is something that I feel uh, the cell group must uh, do, or this is something that uh, they shouldn't do. Uh, and so we do get feedbacks, right? Uh, 
Uh, so regarding the feedback form, this is something that we have stopped as of now because we don't want to use paper. So uh, we try and put that online. And so people can either email us or they fill in uh, the feedback form and email it back to us. Right. So all of this is available online as well. Right. Uh, and then every once in three months, uh, we do a cell health assessment. Right? So meaning is the cell group, I know three months could be a short time, but is the cell group able to coordinate with each other? Is it is it is it able to are they are people in the cell group growing? Are they learning? Are they able to uh, understand? Are, are they able to build fellowships? And uh, and so what we have done is we moved it from three months to six months as well. So we do a three month, six month, and a one year. Right now, after a year, we give we as cell pastors we just slowly step back, meaning we give this life group leader more freedom uh, to you know make decisions. It's not like they don't have freedom initially. It's just that we are we are there to always help them take the right decision or to take the right step. We're always there, uh, but slowly we let them make the decisions. Because if we are always there, they will keep coming back to us. What should I do? Right. Uh, but again, when we look at discipleship, it is to let them make decisions. And when they make the decisions, they learn. If it's a good decision, that's wonderful. You applaud them. It's a decision that okay could have been taken later on, or it's a not a wise decision. So let them learn from their mistakes. And as pastors, as leaders, we. We, we, you know, help them to understand that and they learn from their mistakes, right? So, so this is the administration side, right? Yeah. Uh, you got a life group pastor, right? Uh, or a self pastor. Associate self pastors looking after. Still. As I mentioned, you see, we don't follow it yet. Uh, but instead of associate cell pastors, what we're doing is zonal leaders, five zonal leaders, area coordinators under them. So even if we reach, you know, 200 life groups, we will have enough people. So, but what are we doing now? We, you know, I think it was uh, last year, set. September or October, where we had a meeting with all our life group leaders and we shared the whole plan, the vision, um, and people gave in their names. Like right? uh, we also appointed a few zonal leaders, so we've got that in place. And so eventually, we're going to also assign some of the life groups to these zonal leaders, and then uh, you know appoint uh, appoint more area coordinators. And right? so, so if you look at it, the structures coming into shape right now we will again since it's something that we're doing now um, it's something that we we may have to work with trial and error we have to make decisions we have to uh, figure out how things go about you know uh, but nothing wrong in trying all of this right so what are you doing you're setting in place a structure for the cell group ministry right uh, so if you go on to the next page we see here the cell leaders feedback form. Now, this is just an example, right? It's just a, an example. So you can use it if you'd like in your cell groups. If you already have one, uh, uh, you want to make it available on paper, you can. If you want to just uh, make it available on the phone or just uh, on WhatsApp, probably you can take this uh, structure and then you can you know, you can send it to your life group members and ask them, uh, you know, to fill in the details. And in that way, you're assessing your life. So you can do this probably once in three months, once in six months, or even yearly. And uh, if you go down here, you, you, you also have a, a little bit of space here. You purposely left that so that people can, you know, write feedback, whichever they, you know, whatever they feel like about the life group. So. 
Uh, now, why is this important? Because it gives opportunities for people within the church to, within the cell group, to share their thoughts, right? What what they feel about life group or what they've learned. Uh, so now, again, this is not a compulsion, but this is something that you can try. Right? Uh, and it's just like you're, uh, you're, you're making sure that the life group is functioning, making sure that you're able to grow uh, the health of the life group is strong, right? Okay, so let's get into chapter 10. Chapter 10 is becoming a cell church. Now, I know many of us may already be, we are already part of churches uh, wherever we are. So your church may be a regular church doing many events, or your church may be like a cell church, which is a church with uh, which focuses only on cell groups, right? Now, it doesn't mean that we have to, if you're a regular church doing many events, doesn't mean you have to change to become a cell church. Right? You can continue doing that. But what we also would like to emphasize is that, remember that the cell group is the life of the church. It is what keeps the church strong. It is what builds community and discipleship and there's mentoring, there's leadership, there's all kinds of activities going on in a church. Because that's the life of the church, right? So how can you and I right, become a cell church? Now, some of you may say, I don't want to become a cell church. I want to be a church doing you know, many events and just have cell groups, many cell groups. That's wonderful, right? So. Or some of you may feel, no, I want to have a church which will have at least a hundred cell cell groups, and through the cell groups, we'll do ministry. Right? That's also wonderful. Right? But we'll just look at a few aspects here on how we can become a cell church. Right? Number one is change. To become a cell church, there has to be a change of perception of how a local church operates. We need to understand that what we are really doing is restoring the principle that was set in the early church. Right? So remember, we looked at that, uh, I think it was chapter two, where we looked at the early church, where they met in smaller groups. The Lord Jesus ministered to thousands, but he also made sure he's ministering in smaller groups. Right. Um, if you're already a cell church, that's wonderful. You don't need change, right? Uh, you can continue growing as a cell group, uh, as a cell church. But if you're a church, okay, let's take APC, right? We have we have a church with we do many activities, right? We've got men's ministries, youth ministry, women ministry, um, uh, workplace uh, professionals ministry, uh, uh, teens ministry. We have conferences throughout the year, events and conferences, right? Now, we cannot say, okay, let's stop all of that and only focus on life groups. We can't do that right, as a church. But what we did was in early, I think it was 2015, uh, uh, we just tried to you know, bring in more focus 2014, bringing more focus in into life groups, right? So from 2014, we're trying to you know build the life group ministry, right? So you you we started finding leaders, recognizing potential leaders, uh, giving them opportunities to start life groups, recognizing areas within our city which need a life group. Um, you know, uh, and helping people to start life groups. So we started putting a lot of focus into life groups. But what about the other ministries? The other ministries also continue, right? So the same as uh, same as that, you know, same as what we're doing now, right? Now, as a church, even we are, we have all other ministries going on. So one of my responsibility as a life group uh, coordinator uh, is so all forty-two life groups. I uh, my the vision is at the end of this year we should have at least another 15 life groups so we have 
42 plus 15, that's 57 life groups. And so that's that's the vision. And, and so what about the other things that we are doing? That continues, right? Uh, uh, so, but then we want to see focus on life groups as well. Right? Continuously raising up quality leaders. Uh, this is something that um, uh, something that we always focus on, right? Remove insecurity in the hearts of cell leaders through proper training. A proper and total training system must be put in place. So what we do is when a person is, says, okay, we recognize a person and we say, okay, uh, this person can be a good life group. Sometimes what we do is we ask the person to go attend a life group for about three months, get a feel of what a life group is. And then we, uh, we have a formal training, right? Uh, in fact, even after this call, I have a life group leaders training, right? So we go through the entire life group leaders training manual. Right? A lot of it is taken from this notes as well. Right? So we talk to them about what is a life group? Why are we doing this as a church? How are we impacting the vision? Uh, uh, you know, what is the administration side? Uh, discipleship, how do we raise up new leaders? We talk to, we go through the entire structure of life group. Now the person may know it, the person may not know it. It doesn't matter, we go through the whole thing. Right? So for example, last month, uh, a person, one of our church folks, he was saying, hey, I want to uh, start a life group. Now he's been with our church for 10 years or, right? but. We went through the entire life group leaders manual. Many of the things that I'm, I know that he knows it, right? but it's important to reiterate. Uh, it's important that we train them well, right? No proper leadership development track, sorry, no proper leadership development track hinders growth. With no proper leadership, growth is being hindered right we need to ensure that there are sufficient number of newly trained leaders ready to take on leadership so let me let me give you some examples on what i do right so how can i start off 15 life groups now it's easy to give a number right 15 life groups this year so you break it down right? the month from the month of january to june six months it, I should have started at least maybe seven life groups. And then December, from July to December, another eight life groups. So that's what I, so I mentally, I prepare myself. Right? So seven by Jan to June, eight from July to December. Now, how do I start seven? What can I do? Right? So what I do is I open our church database and I look at uh, I also open our maps, right? Uh, the map of the city. And I try to look at places where we don't have a life group, right? So I put a note of it, right? So these are about 10 areas where we need life groups, right? Then uh, I look at youth life groups. Okay, so we have so many youth living in all across our city. Uh, and these are a few of the areas that we need to uh, you know, start youth life groups. So now I've got the numbers in my mind. I've got to start seven or eight, Jan to June. Now, I've got the areas in place. Okay, these are some of the areas. And then what I do is I look for people who live in and around that area. So I, uh, I make a note of potential leaders. Now, all I'm doing is I'm making a note of them. Probably I write them down, I put them on a, uh, on a Word document, right? Now, after I do that, I, I have about maybe five people in mind. So I begin to talk to them and say, hey, uh, uh, you know, this is something that we need. There are life groups. Uh, you know, sometimes they don't even know what is a life group. They may not have heard. Uh, what happens in a life group. So you'll have to start off from scratch. You need to explain to them, uh, you know, this is what it is. And, and sometimes 
you know, people say, okay. Sometimes people say, no. Sometimes people say, give me some time, right? Uh, don't be discouraged when people say no. It's okay. Right? You can just strike off their name from that list, right? But continue to look up. When people say, give me some time, ask them how long they would like, right? So normally I tell them, can I, uh, can I get back to you in a month's time? A month is a good uh, amount of time. So uh, give them a month's time, let them think about it, and then probably they get back or we try and connect them. Three is, uh, uh, you know, we after, after we give them time, then there are people who say yes. So then what we do is we, again, we, we encourage them to be part of a life group if they are not. Then probably after a, a two or three months, we take them through the training and help them to start the life group. And so, so it's you know even to start one life group, it's it's not as easy as it looks because uh, see, people are working Monday to Friday, and they'd like their Saturday Sundays to be free, right? So not everyone will be open. Uh, so here comes the place where, as leaders, we must recognize people who are willing to sacrifice, willing to give that additional time. Right? So that's what I do. Uh, and then firstly, what I also do is I, I call the existing life group leaders and I say, hey, everyone, give me one person who is a potential life group leader in the year 2024. Right. So uh, I did this in early Jan. I, I spoke to all the life group leaders, 40, 40 life groups is what we had early Jan. So 40 life group leaders said, give me one person who is ready to start a life group. So I've got about 20 names now, right? 20 to 22 names who are potential life group leaders. I'm not saying that all 22 of them will start, but they're potential. So we know that, okay, they're already part of a life group. They're part of APC. They know what a life group is. So if not 24, 25, at least, uh, we can, you know, train them uh, uh, and, you know, disciple them and get them to start new cell groups. Right. So that's how I personally work, right? So, so for example, from Jan, now it's February. So we've already started two life groups. So in my mind, I've got March, April, May, June, four months. I've got to start at least another five life groups, five or six life groups, four months, right? So now today I have another life group leaders trainings. So that's, that's going to be the third life group for this first half, right? So you just break down and plan accordingly right um and a standard so the point is we should have sufficient numbers of leaders that would be in a place where we don't have leaders to lead a life group right? then you have a standard training which is which is something that we already do teach the cell leaders to prepare properly we talked about it uh, we provide material as well um the energy and resources of the church must flow in the same direction. I mean, uh, as a church as well, you know, we we make sure that okay, even life groups are very important. They are, uh, uh, you know, they are the life of the church. We need to start more life groups. Uh, we are building the vision. We're working together, uh, so it's not always two separate entities. Right? Uh, so when you look at a cell church, it's like a two-winged bird. Right. So you have the cell meetings and you have the Sunday celebration services. And both are important. Right? Uh, uh, again, something that we want to do at, in our life groups is that, uh, and we always, I always uh, emphasize this, is uh, to be excellent. And so don't look at uh, just because there are three or four people, let's just do it the way we feel like doing it. No. Be excellent. Right? Even as a leader, if you're preparing, for your uh, if you're preparing for your uh, uh, discussions and Sunday sermon, preparing for it, be excellent in it, right? Prepare well. Uh, don't don't come in just like that, saying, "Okay, I'll just say something." No, prepare well, uh, uh, because it, even with the three or four, be faithful in those small. So when you have bigger opportunities, more number of people coming in, you know that okay, you don't have to prepare well. I have to deliver well so people will be blessed and uh, and so that is something that we always emphasize right 
So it's not like, okay, church service should be excellent, but cell groups, you can do it however we feel like, no. But, uh, even our life group leaders meetings, right? we, we, we follow a structure, we follow an agenda. It's not like everyone come and just you know, sit around and do nothing, no. We have an agenda. This, so for example, we have our, our life group leaders meeting in March, the date is, is March 22nd or so. Uh, yesterday I sent a message out to all the life group leaders saying we're going to meet uh, on this Sunday, March, and this is the agenda. The agenda is already sent, so they know what's going to happen. Right? Um, so what's happening? You're, you're working way beforehand. You're giving them the information. You're trying to do well. So that when the life group leaders see that, they go, okay, hey, so even I must, I'm expected to work in this way. And then you look at it as a single task, meaning the only way you can make a cell uh, ministry work is for it to become the single task of the church. Now, again, uh, this is, uh, this is when you want your cell group to be, your, your church to be completely cell groups so no other meetings no other events um and that's not something that we do right so we as i mentioned we do a lot of events right uh, a lot of other uh, conferences that we have uh, but thankfully we're also able to build on the life group ministries look at some of our t our current programs uh, we have face to face for teens I'm not sure if these uh, are continuing now, especially these two, uh, teens and 20s. So right now we have the teen church, right? So teens uh, are being ministered to them. Face-to-face -face was more for, uh, we have worship times, right? Um, Covenant Keepers was a ministry that we had, uh, but we don't have it now, right? And then we have the Biblical Foundations course that we also have right now uh, so we this is just a short list but we have a lot of other ministries right i'm sure if you go to our website you'll see all of them right uh, but something that's really exciting is that as a church uh, you know, we were able to we are able to build all the ministries right uh, so in that way we are being fruitful in all areas we're trying to uh, not just focus on one area we're trying to focus on different areas, right? Um, so we're not just avoiding certain things or uh, neglecting a certain aspect. But we're doing our best to, you know, reach out to every category, right? So, so for example, in 23, the new ministries that we started was um, the life coaching ministry, uh, uh, the men's breakfast ministry, women's lunch year, and the single adults meet for four uh, different ministries, right? Now, just because we're doing all this doesn't mean that the life group ministry is going down now. So luckily, we have leaders and volunteers, ministry leaders in each of these areas. So we are drive. So the leaders drive the entire ministry. Look at the essence of a cell church. Uh, number one, relationships. It is the heart and life of the church. Cell is not a program, it's not a meeting, the cell is a lifestyle. Participation, everyone is actively participating. Uh, here again, ministry is not optional. Everyone must be willing to minister in some area or the other, right? And that is why, you know, we emphasize that if, uh, for example, you've got a cell group with 25 or 30 people, I'm sure not all of them will get an opportunity right, to serve. So that's why we break it down. Another reason of why we break it down to smaller units so everyone get an opportunity to minister. Right? Uh, everyone should be leading others to Jesus, caring for others. Uh, everyone should be ministering for one another. And then there's empowering leaders uh, in growing churches concentrate on empowering other Christians for ministry and right? so as a cell church uh, we empower people we give them opportunities we uh, we train people we uh, we participate with them we help them to lead uh, and uh, you know many many times 
some of the things that have happened in our church is uh, people have been part of our life groups and uh, they've been with us for many years and eventually uh, they have gone out and started their own churches right so you know it's not like okay hey your life group leader how can you uh, go and start your own ministry you know, if god has called them um they've gone and started and they're doing well as well right and as leaders we must be able to trust them release them right let them do what god has called them to right uh, we have empowered them to become good leaders and many times uh, you know, we get these emails uh, saying that, you know, I was part of Life Group and now I've started my own church. I've learned so much from Life Group. I missed the Life Groups or I missed the, uh, you know, the things that we did in the youth ministry. Uh, so, so remember that you're empowering people, right? The focus again is on Jesus. Uh, so it's not about the person. It's not about their work. It is Jesus doing the work through us and leadership is given to jesus the holy spirit is allowed to work and minister to us then there is outreach and multiplication we talked about this right as a cell church we do what we have to do in terms of outreach plan strategize evangelize right um in networking all cells you know we may have 50 cell groups uh, remember that a cell group is not independent, but is interdependent. Right? Cells can work with each other. Just because a cell group is in, you know, we may have a zone, uh, the north zone and the south zone uh, cell leaders uh, coming together and doing something right, for the church. Now, uh, they may be in two different, you know, maybe 50 miles apart in the same city. Uh, but they're coming together to do something. And, and, and what happens is it brings like-mindedness. Uh, people uh, understand that, hey, we are all part of the same vision uh, of uh, building people or doing ministry. And so networking together. So one of the things that uh, we encourage is for life groups to come together. And, you know, so sometimes what the girls, youth girls life group, what they do is, uh, I think it's once in two months, uh, not really sure, but I think once in two months, they they come together. So two life groups come together and they meet uh, and they just, you know, probably they, uh, they spend time in worship or they spend time uh, in extended time worship or, or, or just reading or whatever they feel like doing, right? This is apart from the life group. And we have family groups that meet from you know, different places. They meet together and they go, they go out on outreach. They go on, they've done this uh, in December. They go out for Christmas uh, programs and all of it. So uh, networking within cell, cell groups. And finally, adaptable structures, right? So uh, the organization, is here to serve you and not to bind you. Meaning, as a church, we don't want people to feel, oh, you know, I'm not, uh, uh, you know, uh, if I don't follow this structure, then, you know, I may be put to task. No, we don't want people to feel that way. So, how can I be adaptable? Uh, over time, you know, initially when we had life groups, I'll, I'll share this and then we'll stop. Initially, when we had life groups, uh, uh, we used to encourage everyone to meet every week because every week is when you know people can people get ministered to there is there's more fellowship happening uh, but over time we understood that okay it's they may not be able to meet every week why right? because people work Monday to Friday so let's make it bi-weekly meaning once in two weeks so we give them a choice see so whenever I, uh, you know, request or recognize leaders and we and they say, okay, the first thing I say is, hey, this is what life groups are doing. Some of them meet every week. Some of them meet bi-weekly. So you have the choice how you want to meet. So we given them the choice, an adaptable structure, right? And then we also tell them, so, uh, as of now, we are, I mean, what we do is we are discussing the Sunday sermon. 
So how do I help with that? So we, if you go to the sermon notes at the board, we have questions. So you can use those questions to guide your discussions, We're making it adaptable. Now for the youth life groups, especially for the girls, what, what we do is we tell them, okay, you can meet bi-weekly or weekly. And then, you know, so there are a couple of girls like, what they do is they meet every week, but two weeks they meet online. And alternate weeks they meet in person. Adaptable. Why do they meet online? Because they can't travel back every year. Yeah, young girls, right? They may not be able to travel back all the way wherever they are meeting. So two weeks online and the other two weeks is they meet in person. So if you look at it, they're meeting every week, but they're meeting in a hybrid manner. And then same goes with the youth boys as well. Now we also have a few youth like groups which meet up at coffee days. Adaptable. We, we, we keep it open for them to do it that way but we always encourage them it shouldn't be a time of just talking and you know spending time it should be a time of ministering to each other a, a good discussion should happen and that's the point of the life group so right so we'll stop here uh and on friday uh we look at uh chapter 11 we go to chapter 11 and Look at the chapter 12, the unlimited possibilities of the cell groups. Right? Uh, and after we you know, complete these this notes, what we'll do is we'll, we'll look at a few aspects on discipleship. Right? Uh, uh, what is the meaning of discipleship? What is, uh, uh, what, are the, what is the structure involved in discipleship? So we'll look at that as well. Right? Right? Any questions, any thoughts before we close? Okay. All right. So uh, have a good week ahead. I'll see you on Friday. Uh, God bless.